welcome back to Gypsy in the City TV. Today's video is going to be part of a video series that I'm doing for you guys. And basically to give you a little bit of background around this project I'm doing is uh, back in 2011 on my blog I did a series called Preaching the Curl Gospel and this series was basically about my natural hair journey, the transition and how I was able to get my curls back and it's to this day it's one of my most popular uh, posts on my blog and like I said it was a part a two part series and so many people to this day asked me how I got my hair back, um, asked me for tips on transitioning and just natural hair care in general and I always refer them back to those blog posts but I feel like they're so old I did them back in 2011 they're super outdated so I really wanted to update th that preaching the curl gospel series and I thought well now that I'm on YouTube why don't I just do a video series about it so then I can show you guys pictures and obviously that was back in 2011 so there's so much more things that I learned from that time so this is part of a series called preaching the curl gospel and I'm going to be sharing with you guys my natural hair journey in part one which is this video of course so let's talk about it I have a little note card so that I don't get off topic and I start rambling because as you saw in my last video I just love to ramble so pretty much I've been a natural all of my life when I was young my mom you know used to do her hair and she would like do always moñitos all the time and I remember she would even finger curl her hair and it's funny because she actually used sugar and water as hairspray and I don't know why but it, I'm sure we could have afforded hairspray at the time because it's not that expensive but maybe her grandmother did this on her but I remember that she would do like pigtails and then she would like finger curl the hair and she would take water and mix it with sugar and as she was finger curling her hair she would um use the water sugar mixture and then throughout the day that would harden and it would be like hairspray and like i said to this day i don't know why she used it i'm pretty sure we could have afforded hairspray but that's just a memory that i have so yeah my mom always used to do me and my sister's hair and at one point um the first time i ever got my hair relaxed was when my mom did it and she used like that little just for me hair relaxer for kids and i was not feeling it i was like ma i don't like this stuff and i remember she did it like i think she did it like once or twice Twice. and I was like mm -mm, this is not for me boo and so I told her I didn't like it and she was like okay well if you don't like it then you're just gonna have to do your own hair so me and my sister were like okay that's fine like nobody asked you to keep doing our hair anyways we were like eight or nine so um so I started taking care of my own hair and you know like I said you know always rocked my curls I was always known for my curly hair and even in high school people like some people didn't even know my name but if you were to say oh the tall girl with curly hair all of a sudden people would would know that it was me so I was always known for for my curls and um the pretty much the point that I guess I'm right here was in the in 2008 so in 2008 I'm a graduated high school and I moved to Miami for college and I lived on campus and at that time I had I had gotten bangs so I was straight in my hair to so I can rock my bangs and my roommate at the time she had a, a flat iron and it was the chi brand and she was like I don't know if you ever use this but I definitely recommend it you should try it on your hair I think you would love it and what was that for that was literally my downfall I used to blow dry my hair myself and then I would straighten it with the chi flat iron and this was like a weekly routine and that's really when my hair just the heat damage really started to happen and I my hair was also red at the time it, but it was like a dark wine color so I wasn't really getting the damage from the hair dye I was mostly getting it from the heat damage and then you know at that time that was when Rihanna was out with her red hair and I just started becoming more and more obsessed with red hair so I started lighting it lighting it not lighting it on fire I started lightening it to get it to become redder and redder so I gradually did this over the course of a year I want to say so I got my hair to be like super super bright red and I mean I loved it I loved the way it looked on my complexion I got a lot of compliments on it people used to call me big red on campus you know I really loved rocking my you know long reddish hair with a bang and at that point I really liked it but when I would try to wear my hair curly it it looked like shit. It looked horrible. It was like, 
It was so ugly. It was stringy. I looked bald headed. It, it was just bad. The mixture of the heat damage and then the, the lightning process with the bleach and everything, that just really, really kills my hair. And I, I didn't know what to do at that point. I, I still wanted to keep on straightening my hair. But at the same time, I wanted to go back to my curls, but I didn't even know how to go back because it was just so bad. So I thought, well, maybe if I stop uh, dyeing it, well, that will help a lot. So I dyed my hair black. I just dyed it black. I'm like, I'm just going to go back to my natural hair color, whatever. And even a lot of people were like, why did you do that? I loved your red hair. But seriously, it's not your hair. It's mine and I need to fix it. So I dyed it back to black and that was fun. But as you can tell by now, I'm like crazy with my hair and I get easily bored. So I wanted something new again. So I got a bob and I loved my bob. I was rocking it. That was like the first time that I really ever had short hair in my um, as a teenager and I or my adult life whatever and I really loved it and I had so much fun with that look and then in 2009 I moved to New York so I kept rocking my bob I got bored again then I got bang so I got a bang bob bob with bangs bob bang bang bob I don't know I was rocking a bob with bangs and I really loved it and some people even thought it was a wig but I was like no boo this is my hair and it looks flawless <laughs> So yes, love that look. And um, then in 2010, I started working at a department store. And I met one of my really good friends, Lisa, and we worked in the accessories department together. And me and Lisa, was it was just like an instant click. We, lo we both loved beauty, so we would always talk about beauty stuff at work. And we were always at the makeup counter when we weren't supposed to be. So Lisa, I loved Lisa's hair. I mean, Lisa would come to work one day with beautiful luscious like curls and then the next week she would come to work with like a banging blowout and I just loved how versatile her hair was and I it just brought me back to the times of like when my hair used to do that too and but obviously it didn't do it anymore so that's why I kept straining it and I mean I used to go to the salon like every week in New York even in the summer I was at the hair salon and I think there was like a time where I didn't have time to go to the hair salon and get my hair done so I came to work with like my hair curly but obviously it looked so ridiculous so I had it like pinned back and Lisa was like hold up you have curly hair and I'm like yes and I started showing her pictures and stuff and she's like oh my god first of all you're crazy for going to the hair salon like under this weather it's like a hundred degrees outside and you're really going to sit under the secadora with rollos on and to get your hair blown out you're crazy and i was like well i have curly hair but it doesn't look good so this is like my only option and then that was when lisa put me on to the natural hair community on youtube she was like girl there's so many amazing products and so many things you can do to get your curly hair back if i did it you could do it too so um, Lisa told me about Taryn and then that's how I found out about Taryn and I started watching her videos If you guys don't know about Taryn, um, she's been doing YouTube videos for a long time and it's really been um, Great to see her grow over the years um, Not only on YouTube, but also personally and and as in her business and as an entrepreneur so love Taryn she's a huge inspiration of course and Lisa put me onto her videos so I started watching them and I was like, okay, I can do this. I can get my curls back. State of hair. The first tip that I am going to give you is to stop straining your hair. Stop using heat. That was my big thing, the heat damage. So obviously to stop that, you need to stop using the heat. Give away your flat iron, give away your blow dryer, do whatever you can to stop yourself from straining your hair. You have to stop straining your hair. The heat damage is what is messing up your curl pattern and you're never gonna get your curls back if you keep straining it. So stop with the heat, say no to heat. That's the first thing you wanna do. The second tip I have is to cut your hair. I would say maybe cut your hair a month in your transition phase and because what you're going to see is when you start wearing your hair in its natural state, you're going to see that the roots are going to be extremely, extremely curly because your hair, your natural hair is coming out. You're not using heat on that. So your curl, your roots, your roots are going to be super curly and then the rest of your hair is going to be super stringy. So you need to get rid of, you need to get rid of that stringy hair so that the curl can start growing out and you have only one one texture because your hair is going to be full of 
different textures so what i would recommend is if you have the balls to do it do the big chop do it there's so many great people great videos on youtube of people that have done the big chop and um and how you can transition into that and then the different um stages that your hair goes through i wish i had the balls to to do a big chop at the time and really have gotten to experience like the different stages because i'm sure that would have just been a really fun time for me but i didn't have the balls to do it at the time so i transitioned slowly now the advantage of getting a big chop is that if you get a a big chop like you're cutting all of the hair at once so your hair is gonna grow out faster or you're gonna you're gonna achieve the results that you want with your curls faster if you transition how I did and you cut your hair off little by little it's gonna take you longer because you're literally cutting off little by little by little so you're gonna be transitioning for like two years ain't nobody got time for that so if you can just do the big chop or you can do in between which is kind of what I did so the first time I cut my hair I just cut the I just cut the ends because I was too scared to lose the length and I didn't know how to deal with it and all that stuff so I just cut the ends and then about like two to three months in I was like this is ridiculous it's gonna take me forever my hair looks crazy because like the curls had started growing and then the stringiness so I was just like okay I don't have the balls to do a big chop but I'm gonna do my version of a big chop which was cutting a lot of my hair off like I mean my hair was like up to here like do you see this this little piece that I have here that's how short my hair was and I've never had my hair that short curly I've had it that short straight because of my bob but I've never had it that short curly so that was a big chop for me that was that was a big big deal for me and and getting used to that so I went to diva Sean and i got a my big chop and i just i told her cut off all the dead hair i'm done i want to get rid of it just cut it all off so i did that and by the way lisa was the one too who put me on to diva Sean. she gave me a gift card for my birthday and that's when where i went to get my big chop so thank you lisa i love you i appreciate you you're one of my closest most amazing friends so thank you for everything that you've done for me so that was my hair journey and next video part two of preaching the curl gospel i'm going to share with you guys my road to recovery and everything that i did the products that i used to get my hair to where it's at now so stay tuned for that video bye now of course i'm going to share with you some of my favorite products when i was transitioning and they are